Yeah, yeah. Lady Justice in the house. Keeping the balances of justice level with the light of liberty shining bright. You're so silly. What? Yeah, yeah. Right. There's no reason you should even in here. Looking in his own house. Windows. We got a call for service. I No, a call for service, this but there's a call. door you could knock and see, hey, who is this guy? This, you want to see yeah. my call notes? No. My call notes saying he was walking around looking in the windows. In his own house. How am I supposed to know that? By knocking hey on the guys, door. Welcome back to San Joaquin Valley Transparency. This is that kind of video that's going to upset you guys. As soon as I seen it, I reached out to the man who recorded it and gave me permission to share it. This family moves into a new house. The autistic son is outside looking in the window. A neighbor calls the cops. Cops get there and they immediately tackle him after he tries to walk back inside the house. They are rude from the beginning. They don't even identify properly. They're rude to the father when he comes out. They threaten to arrest him. You guys, this is a disturbing video. You guys are going to be truly upset. If you guys get upset, know how to channel your energy. Know how to channel your anger and turn it into action. Let's make some phone calls. Let's take the court of public opinion over to this man's channel and let's show these public officials and these cops that they cannot be doing this to the people. We won't allow it and we won't accept it. This officer needs to be fired in my opinion. So without further ado, here's your video, folks. I'm gonna preface this with one thing. This is my, my son's first day in Florida, moving down to his new house. So after a minute or so of me pleading with the officer, telling him, what are you doing? Why are you got my son on the ground? Why you got him in handcuffs in his own house? I am the owner of this property. You're telling me to stand back, stand back. At that point, I knew I had to get my camera. So the first few minutes of the, my dealing with this, I didn't have it on. I didn't even have my camera on me. I had to run back into the house and get it, which leads to the next part of the clip. Go to jail for what? He did nothing wrong. Did I or did I not just tell you we're trying to figure that out? You come I, over here I, by the car yeah. we're talking to him. No, you're taking him from my house. house. Understand, you're you taking him. Right there and no, right you're home. taking you him from his car, house. Too. His ad, his, he is autistic. Get him out of the cuffs. I understand that. Then what are you is doing? He hurt right now? No. He He's simply in handcuffs. He's I know how handcuffs. tight y'all put them on. Autistic, man. You can't talk to him. Do you understand what I'm saying? I understand what you're saying. Give us a little bit. Get him out of the cuffs and get him Take back care. to my house. This is his house. He's the one that called. Yeah. He didn't know. Yeah, I he just got here from North Carolina last night. He's looking at his new house. All right. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. He's already told the officer several times that the man lives there that take him out of the cuffs and the officers are just standing there. Why do you think they're standing there, folks? I believe it has a lot to do with ego. I believe it has a lot to do with power tripping and I believe it has a lot to do with internal investigations, qualified immunity and police unions. And that's why police behave the way they do. He's bleeding on the shoulder though. Did you tackle him down? I was playing a few minutes. Yeah, I'd like to know. Oh, no. I'm in there. And you ripped his fucking shirt. He's gonna need some medical. He's gonna need some medical attention. Do you see the blood coming off his back? You want an ambulance to come check him out? Yes. Okay. Wait, come here, buddy. Turn, turn come here, son. Turn not, uh, 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 my, my arm. Okay. Oh no, it's not a cut. It's a scrape. I thought it, was, it looked like blood earlier. But that's a pretty. God damn it. I take it. You dad? Yes. Okay. Can I talk to you? Sure. Go back to my car. Hey man, nice meeting you, bud. Whoa, the officer just told that kid, nice to meet you, bud, after he slams him on the freaking ground and tackles him. Yeah, no, I'm good. You want to disregard him? You don't want EMS to see him? No, I'll, I'll clean it up. I okay. thought it was blood. Let me fill you guys in on a little bit of something. The man should have definitely had paramedics come out and check his son. The son would not have had to leave with paramedics. Therefore, the son would not get charged, especially in an incident like this when it involves a public official. Call the paramedics out. You can even call the fire department out. They are also trained to come out and check vital signs and stuff like that. Plus, keep in mind, it will be documented, folks. That's what I pay for as a taxpayer. Keep that in mind. 2204, you can't blame us. All right, but so here's the deal. <clears throat> we get a call from this gentleman. Yeah. That, uh... <laughs> 
there was a suspicious person looking through the windows in this uh, car. I or in this house. I uh, parked here. Yeah, it's my house. And I walk along the east side, and I see this gentleman end up being your son. Yeah. Doing this through the uh -huh. windows. I'm like, hey man, what's your name? He immediately takes off from me. So I didn't know. I was in there in the kitchen. I got the water going. He's he literally just got here last night, this morning, at 4 o'clock this morning from North Carolina. And yeah. he, this is his first day here. It's one of those uh, horrible timing things. So, <laughs> you think? Uh, so, here's wish, the deal. so he never, um, your son never talked to me at all. When I put him in handcuffs he and he really, started to scream, Yeah. that's when I knew something was up. Uh, was, there was something, he had a mental defect or something, you know? So. Uh, but I don't understand why he was tackled. Because he took off for me. He took off for me. I chased him down and tackled him. I didn't know what I had at the time. You didn't know what you had. Now, back to the pressing story at hand. Indian County Sheriff's Department um, trying to hide from the people and tackle autistic boys. Let's see what Sam the Man had to say on Sunday. Identify properly. They're rude to the father when he comes out. They threaten to arrest him. You guys, this is a disturbing video. You guys are going to be truly upset. If you guys get upset, know how to channel your energy. Know how to channel your anger and turn it into action. Let's make some phone calls. Let's take the court of public opinion over to this man's channel. And let's show these public officials and these cops that they cannot be doing this to the people. We won't allow it and we won't accept it. This officer needs to be fired, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. So El Presidente asked for action. He asked for phone calls, and that's exactly what Lady Justice did. She uh, called them. Well, on uh, Sunday, we did um, People's School, and we got together some talking points um, so that, you know, everybody was on the same page. And come Monday morning, Lady Justice called, and uh, after, you know, making several phone calls and navigating their uh, voice commands, she was able to get a call from Sergeant Price, I believe, right? And um, we showed that yesterday on People's School, but Bone has, has a clip from that, um, that um, just one part of it, you know, so let's let's play that and, and remind ourselves, or if you have not seen it yet, then get a dose of Lady Justice and her four per assembler stars. The subject, we caught him. Once we caught him, we put the subject in we put the subject in handcuffs. Hold on, hold on, hold on. In, 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 this on in this country we do not have subjects. So please understand that. We do not That's what we call them because we we don't know we don't know who he is. I didn't want to say suspect. Because right now he's he's a suspect. He's, he might be doing something wrong. We don't know until we find out. It's easy to look back on this ball in hindsight and go, well, we shouldn't have done this, we shouldn't have done that, we could have done this different. Of course we could. If we lived in a world of hindsight... Well, as soon but, as your officer became fully aware, in other words, was notified by the father several times in the video, as well as the neighbor who mm -hmm. said that he made it, you know, an error... Mm -hmm. Even after that, that officer took that disabled young man from the safety of a new home that he's just now getting into. So obviously, you know, I have worked with individuals with disabilities for many years, so I understand completely, okay, autism. Um, If you so don't know, then why attack him? officer took yeah, yeah. this individual, which he clearly said that he knew something was up as soon as he slapped those handcuffs on, um, because the individual, uh, the dis the person with disability, started yelling and screaming, and the way he was yelling and screaming, the officer was alerted that something w was up, that he knew something was up. He didn't understand exactly what. Yes, However, he was a medical emergency, or he, he, he was someone with disability, or he was under the influence of something. Correct. He knew something was up, so he was heightened, he was alerted. But even after the father came out and told him repeatedly several times, as well as the neighbor came out and said, oh, I made a great error, that officer continued to have that individual with disabilities in handcuffs, not only walked him from the safety of his own yard, uh, but 
over to the police car and even threatened the father to have the, to arrest the father if the father didn't step back and and you know that is inappropriate um behavior on on the we officer have, we have uh, followed up with the father on this uh we've been in contact with the father we have had now that we know everything that's going on uh we've actually had the disabled young man uh, up at our sheriff's office uh play it you know uh letting him play on the helicopters and showing him all the things that we have um we have worked this out and we've used it as a very good training incident and we've learned a lot from it it's reinforced our training on it the situation as far as between the the sheriff's office and the father has been worked out and the, the father understands what happened and how the the deputy uh, could only act on what information he had it's not totally out of the realm ma'am that when we legitimately arrest somebody for doing something wrong and family members come out of the house not in this case but family members come out of the house and try to interfere and try to do us harm so to say to family members that are running out of the house you know step back do not interfere is something that unfortunately in today's world has to be said well else- and i would agree with you sir however the father had explained to to the officer several times you know my son has autism even the officer explained and expressed well i knew something was up when i handcuffed him you know Uh, right and this this subject was and this subject was he's not a subject sir he's not a subject sir we do not have we don't have subjects in this i don't know his name yeah, ma'am, don't know it's yeah, an individual. Subject, I'm, I'm I'm call him an individual. Okay, He's not an a subject. Individual. I, I, <laughs> we don't have subjects in this country, and that's something law enforcement needs to really understand. Well, we call them subjects because that's what they are to us. They are subjects involved in a case. I'm not saying it's a suspect. I'm not we that's just for thirty years of doing this job. Individual. Okay, the, the young man with the mid. All right. Um, all investigations have to have a subject. Okay, and that subject for police is supposed to be a crime. Okay, uh, police investigate crimes, not people. Certainly not people, not persons, not individuals. They investigate crimes, right? So the crime is the subject. So when an officer says on a police report and calls a person the subject, they're saying that the person is a crime. So they are alleging a crime, right? They do have a subject, but their subject is incorrect, right? And if police are going and calling person subjects, then that's the first problem. And, um, you know, that's just one of many topics, but, uh, and, and we can't wander too far from the original call, which we still want to get the body cam footage. We still want to get the 911 call, um, you know, in the police report, right? But really what we want to know is what was the subject of the investigation? What crime were they investigating, right? Now, yesterday, um, after this call, we had Wrights Crispy on. Uh, Bonehead has another clip. Let's hear what Wrights Crispy had to say. To be honest, I let a lot of weakness juice squirt from my eyeballs. I cried a lot watching that that kid getting attacked. Well, you didn't even have to see it, just to see the aftermath. And the the total disconnected audacity of this guy on the phone to say, oh, yeah, he wasn't triggered next time we continued our that's some bullshit, man. Like it sounds you- just like the rapist says, "Oh, well, she wasn't complaining when she came over the next time, right?" And got raped again. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. They, they have that rapist mentality. They really try to yeah. victim blame and and you know, they're acting like yeah. it's okay what what that cop did. He did not follow procedure, and that's where we could get the cops. You could see some a cop have somebody in handcuffs and applying what they call 
pain compliance, which is part of their training. So you can't get them for that. But you can get them for this, for tackling somebody. And like you said, a non-consensual conversation. Well, you want to talk to me? Oh, you're going down. He didn't know that's a crime. He doesn't know that a crime was afoot reasonably and, and that he could articulate. So he fucked up. He went outside of training, attacked a, a special needs citizen, and then threatened his father with arrest a couple of times for trying to rescue him. Which is the point I want to get to right now. I almost forgot, right? Because if uh, one of your family members is arrested, do you lose the right to press? Nope. Nope. And right. that's been sidewalk post to you. I mean, you have to interfere before you interfere. Are yeah. you just assumed to interfere because oftentimes family members might interfere? So now what they have to stay 35 feet away or 47 yeah. feet away or how far away do they have to stand? What rights do they lose when one of their family members is uh, tackled and detained for not committing a crime? And it's not about just standing far away. They don't want to be recorded. It's the camera right. that bothers them, not the distance. And you right. see that in that one arrest of the father who was recording his son's traffic stop in his own neighborhood in California, where they sprayed him and they tackled him and stuff. He was on the other side of the street on the sidewalk. And they just didn't want to be Yeah. They didn't want to be recorded. And... Um... You know, we need to stay focused on the crime, right? Because it looked to me, it sounded to me like uh, Sergeant Price was saying that it was a consensual conversation. Um, he said the officer came up and said, how are you doing? Can I talk to you? And then he ran, right? Well, that's okay to do in a consensual conversation, right? He didn't claim that he said, you're detained, you're under arrest, stop, don't move, you know. Uh, so, and they didn't have any information of a crime, you know, but they're calling somebody as a subject and that's where they've gotten way off base. So today, um, well, yesterday, Sergeant Price referred Lady Justice to Captain Kit Carson. Is it's that right? Kent, Car uh, Kent Campbell. I think it's oh, Kent. Campbell. Yeah. yeah. Captain Campbell. Yeah. And um, in order to get the name of the officer, the original date, the, um, you know, information about the stop, um, as well as she wanted to also talk about other things. Well, let's see how that call went, Lady Justice. Let's play it. Yeah. Yes, I am trying to return Captain Campbell's call. Okay. Um, he is, I can get his direct line. I'll transfer you. They have to transfer you. He is at 9786148. Okay, can, okay. Yeah, yeah. That number again, 978. Nine, uh -huh. nine, 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 okay. Six one four eight. Four eight. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Just one moment. Yeah, yeah, we wanted to give you that phone number. Good, good afternoon, sir. Um, this is Melinda returning your call. I'm sorry with the problem that I had with my phone. This is Captain Campbell. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Um, the reason I was calling you um, is I had some questions that I was wondering if you could possibly answer for me. Um, I was referred to you by um, Sergeant Price. Uh, he and I had a lengthy conversation yesterday. I don't know if he, he spoke to you about that or not, but at any rate, um, today um, what my question is for you is... He kept trying to refer to um, the young gentleman that I was calling him about as a subject, and it's my... Sorry, folks, this happened yesterday, too. He's getting a, a phone call, but we're going to resume. 
All right. that in our country here in America, we do not have subjects uh, like, you know, for example, in England, they, they do have subjects. So, uh, yeah. I've got a meeting here in just about uh, seven minutes, so. Okay. Just well, just get to the point. What, do we, what are you trying to get to? Uh, I'm wondering why we're calling um, people subjects. And what was the subject? Well, if, if we get a call to a disturbance or we get called to something, it's about it. the person is listed as a subject initially until we determine what their what the position is. They could be a defendant, they could be a victim, they could be a witness, or they could be just a, just a civilian walking along. Okay, I thought uh, the, they can the be subject anything is but innocent. To be the crime. People are what? not subjects. It's three forty-two p.m. It's the crime that is the subject. No, 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 not maybe in maybe in your world, but in our world, that's how it's listed as. Hmm. Well, what crime? Hey, what, what crime was they investigating? Where, hey, where are you at? Where are you at, Sally? Um, where I'm at is not really a matter. It's I'm a, just, just, I am. Ma'am, ma'am, the, the demographics of your area are different than demographics of our area, and the way we handle things and the way we title things are completely different. What's con- considered a burglary here mm-hmm. is considered a, a, a theft of a residence or something like that up, up north. So the we're playing semantics here. What can I help you with? Who cares? What crime was being investigated? Uh, I reference to what? Uh, that the was being called that the the boy with autism was being investigated for. That was the whole purpose of my initial phone call. Okay. Um, All right. Well, ma'am, ma'am, just so you know that that was addressed. It's been handled to the father's satisfaction. We've. Um, uh, it was a mistake on the neighbor's part, and the father did not tell them that A, that he was bringing his son back, or B, that he was back. And well, I don't so think people need was... to be telling their neighbors what their plans are. <laughs> okay. All right. Honestly. Ma'am, you and I are going to differ on this. We've, we've been handling calls because of some uh, joker that decided to repost that video and put his own narrative to it, uh, so... which is spinning up people like yourself. And we've been handling this for the last week and a half. This was three months ago. Uh, the boy is over all the over everything now. Uh, we've uh, had him over well, here. The general public the is not over now. it. Um, oh, okay. you, and I, you and I are done talking about this topic. Uh, maybe no, uh, no, no, listen up, you. Captain. This is how this okay, is going to yeah. go. Okay, the Captain people have questions and they expect. There you go. He hung up. Yeah, that's uh, Captain Carson. No, Captain Campbell. Campbell. Captain Campbell. At Kent the, uh, Campbell. Yeah, I thought it was Kit Campbell, but anyway, it's Captain Campbell for sure. At the Indian County uh, Sheriff's Department, and his number was played at the beginning. That's his direct line. Um, Lady Justice put a call in to the under sheriff after being hung up on. Um, certainly the people are not, um, over it, uh, just because he, um, invited them in for a little playtime with the, uh, chopper and everything. Um, even if, uh, the boy feels better about it, uh, here at people's school, we still have a lot of issues with this call and we would like the 911, um, call. We would like the body cam footage. We, um, still haven't even gotten the the actual date of it or and the most incident imp- number yeah or the incident number and most importantly what is the crime right because like uh rights crispy was saying um where this officer can be held accountable is on the policy violation if that was a consensual conversation or not what crime was he investigating you know and the captain wants to uh run in circles and hang up so obviously they're trying to cover up they've been getting a lot of calls that's good we need to keep that up, but like El Presidente said, keep them focused, um, you know, because we do want action on this. Yeah, yeah. So, Lady Justice will be keeping up with that, and we will keep you informed as that goes on. Oh, comma, I love it, period. Uh, double pump. Uh, 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 but you thought I forgot I didn't. 
uh, I never forget, uh, Indian River County Sheriff's Department. Uh, we have the 911 call uh, from the neighbor to 911 um, that started the entire incident in Vero Beach that we've been covering since last week when uh, El Presidente put out a call to action. Um, so Lady Justice made, um, and really had to hound the, the shit out of him, you know, for lack of a, a better phrase, and um, just stay on him and stay on him. Weed through the nonsense because they're obscurantists from way back. And uh, but she was able to obtain some public information. And um, we're going to, you know, go through it one one piece at a time here at People's School and make sure that nothing gets missed. But um, you have it ready to Thank play you. the 911 call. Good morning. How can I help you? Sister, come on out. My name is Ray McGrath. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So um, that is not at all the way that it was portrayed by uh, Captain Campbell and Sergeant Price um, in our in Lady Justice's previous phone calls to the Indian River County Sheriff's Office. Um, according to them. Um, you know, they said that somebody reported um, a, a boy looking in the windows, but they left out mysteriously the fact that he said he looks like he's lost. Um, they just want, he just wants somebody to come and, and look, right? 
like that there was no report the dispatcher didn't ask anything like well is he broken in is he gone anywhere that um you know is locked is he uh right like have you witnessed him committing any crimes nothing like that right yeah yeah real jingy i see you're in the chat cheers time stamping yes uh vet tech kimmy oregon rogue line one you have rights cops have duties thank you all for being here lady zaga yeah yeah so um you know that that officer he uh showed up to the scene and um he uh asked the boy if well according to the sheriffs he asked him if uh how he was doing and like if he could talk to him and he ran right well we still haven't seen a crime you know there was no crime reported the uh captain campbell uh said you know did we listen to the 911 call well now we have listened to the 911 call and we have still yet to hear a crime reported um so you know that's where the the buck stops right if um if they were investigating a crime instead of a person that they're calling a subject and they that if they knew that the subject of their investigation was supposed to be a crime not a person then um, maybe all this could have been avoided yeah so uh his shirt's ripped his shoulders bleeding um you know he's definitely been injured and there is a lot more to this story folks but um lady justice what do you what do you think about all this well i find it very odd as we dive deeper there's nothing mentioned about excessive force being used on this young man anywhere that i can find in any of the reports yeah that's true that's true um and we'll be getting to those reports um but we're we are gonna try and take this one step at a time you know so the call um what do you think about the call is that um how we were how the call was portrayed from the sheriff's well, department absolutely not you know they the gentleman that was calling in was concerned. He had concern that there's somebody standing out there that looks like they're lost, that they possibly need help, um, that he didn't think that anybody was home, uh, that he did say that. But he, this person that was out there was unfamiliar, and it was a kid. That's what he said. And that is not really what the sheriff's office is portraying. They're saying that it, um, the terminology that they used. A subject. A subject. Yeah. Yes, they call him a subject, first of all. Yeah. And then they're they're wanting to investigate that. Yeah, they said no that, that uh, the neighbor reported a subject, a male subject, but he didn't. He said a person, um, a man, he used some different words, but uh, he never said a subject. And, um, you know, I don't want to skip forward but too much, but we do have the 911 um, dispatch, too, to the police officer. And uh, she translated person into subject um, for the officer. So um, I, she definitely has a role in this as well, you? you know. Uh, but... Do you have that ready? I don't, maybe we could hear the 911 dispatch um, out to the police officer. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're not. 2474 Southwest 20th Avenue. 24. 24. Can you preempt this civil for a suspicious person? 2474 Southwest 20th Avenue. But she changed it. Suspicious person at 2036 15th Street Southwest. 2036 15th Street Southwest and also Park. Call is advising they live at 2046 15th Avenue Southwest and there's a man walking around his residence looking in the windows. Call is advising he's not home. Subject is going to be a white male wearing a red shirt, white shorts with stripes on it and has a beard and is wearing sunglasses. Can I reach 
So uh, she said the subject and provided a description for the subject, right? So she's the one who did that translation. They think that um, somebody that uh, might be suspected of committing a crime is a subject. And I just don't know where they got that idea in the first place. But what's even worse is that this has been going on for a long time. Um, police officers, they all call uh, everybody subjects, and uh, that is nothing new, but it is, it, it is a huge problem, and that's uh, the beginning of the problem, right? Um, well, you know, at least right at the beginning. <laughs> it's somewhere at the closer to the beginning, you know. Lady Zaga, dang, the 911 call taker added information. Yeah, for sure. It's like musical chairs, you know. But he is in a wheelchair and concerned, dot, dot, dot. And I get that, dot, dot, dot. But you can very well tell if someone is autistic or otherwise mentally handicapped, dot, dot. Yeah, he knew immediately. That officer knew immediately, tackled him anyway, kept him in the cuffs the whole time, even after uh, the dad told him seven times that um, he was the dad and that he lived there. You know, real jingy, are we all just their subjects? Well, they'd like to think so. I mean, in Canada, they have subjects. In England, they have subjects, right? But in America, we don't have subjects. You can be subject to a code. A person can be subject to a law. Um, you could be subjected to an investigation. But um, we don't have subjects. We have people. We have persons. We have citizens. Those are just three words for humans, and that's how it is in a republic. Um, you know, if it was a monarchy, you might have royalty, nobility, and um, and peasants, right? Or subjects, you know, what, whatever you call them. But uh, they're not people. You know, people have the, the rights. Persons have privileges, and Arby's has the meats. Yes, Top Cat 888. Yesterday, we played the 911 call from the neighbor, and we played the dispatch out to the officer. And um, the neighbor called in and said, that there was somebody at the neighbor's house and that he knew he didn't live there and that he knew that the neighbor wasn't home and both of those were incorrect. Um, so he clearly made uh, a false report, but not he wasn't intending to, but he did, right? And, um, and it did cause alarm. And, um, and then... Uh, but he just said that the boy looked lost, right? Like he could tell that something was wrong with him and he was just looking in the windows and he'd been doing it for half an hour. And, um, you know, he didn't report any crime like that he had broken anything or gone anywhere over a fence or somewhere that he can't be. Um, and yet the officers come out there and handle it the way they did. Yeah. So, okay. So uh, this guy... He goes and he gets his son from North Carolina and it's his first day there and his son has autism and his son is like exploring the place and looking around and trying to acclimate to his new environment. And um, the neighbor uh, didn't uh, get briefed or something. I guess he has uh, decided that, um, you know, he uh, knows who's who lives in every house in the neighborhood, I guess, and um, who is, is authorized to be there. People can't have guests or anything without telling him. And he calls the police and, um, you know, starts this whole thing in action, right? And, uh, the, you know, his, his intentions probably weren't bad, but in this day and age, you just cannot call the police and, and send armed gang members out to your neighbor's house um, you know, he thought that the boy was lost. I I think he should have just gone outside and, and talked to the boy himself. Like, I mean, what's the big deal? You know, he wasn't uh, reporting like he was scared, like this, like he was being violent or anything like that, right? So why didn't he just go outside his house and, um, and talk to him himself? You know, go knock on his neighbor's house if he knows his neighbor that well. But uh, we got the police report of what the officer said, and I'm going to go ahead and read that. Let's pull that up and um, and see how that aligns with uh, what we just saw in that last clip, because we saw that his shirt was ripped, that uh, the officer said he was tackled. So scroll down to the incident report. 
or the narrative on that. So it was in Barrow Beach. Okay, there we go. All right. So on March 19th, 2021, at approximately 1822 hours, I responded to 2036 15th Street Southwest in reference to a suspicious person. According to the complaint, a male subject. Okay, this is his first lie. He says the complainant um, says that a male subject. First of all, the complainant called him a man and a person. Okay, never a subject. Uh, was walking around the aforementioned residence and looking into the windows. The complainant also advised public safety dispatch that the homeowner of the residence was not currently home. Upon arrival, the complainant was sitting in his driveway and advised that the suspect was on the east side of the residence. So now he's a suspect. I then approached the residence and quietly walked up on the east side of the corner of the residence. I then noticed a younger male, later identified as Jason Brown, looking through the garage door window. I then identified myself to Brown and ordered him to identify himself. Brown abruptly turned his back to me and began walking away from me. All right, so he doesn't have any reasonable articulable suspicion of a crime. Looking through a garage door window is not a crime. Nothing that was reported was a crime. And yet uh, he follows Brown. So while following Brown, I asked him if he lived at the incident address. At no time did Brown ever speak to me. At this point and after I asked my question, he began to flee from me on foot. After a short foot pursuit, I was able to catch the male on the north side of the house in between houses to the east. So he doesn't say how he caught him. He doesn't say he tackled him. Brown, who still had not said anything, began to actively resist my efforts to place him in hand restraints. After securing Brown, he began to scream, and I immediately noticed that Brown was not of sound mind. Brown began to speak, and his audible tones were that of a child. I then observed a male run up to the incident location, identifying himself as the suspect's father. The male was later identified as Jeremy Brown. Jeremy was irate that I, too, placed Brown into custody and advised that his son was autistic. Jeremy then stated that he was recording me as I walked Brown to the front of my patrol car. I attempted to speak with Brown. However, his disability was so severe that I could not understand him. Jeremy verified that he lives at the incident location with his son and stated that his condition is in fact severe. Brown was immediately released from hand restraints and reunited with his father. Jeremy wanted his son checked out by emergency medical services as there was a minor abrasion on Brown's right arm as a result of my actions. EMS cleared Brown at the scene with no injuries noted. I then spoke with the complainant, Raymond McGriff, McGriff stated that he lived next to Jeremy for approximately 12 years and had never seen Brown at the residence. McGriff confirmed that the suspect was looking into windows and also stated that the male appeared to be lost. Based on the totality of the circumstances, this case is unfounded. All right, Bonnet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is Sam the man still in? Yeah, he's here. He's just uh, I'm listening. muted. Yeah. Oh, okay. Audio. Sorry, man. Time. I had my I had my granddaughter crying in the background. <laughs> no, you're you're good, bro. You're good. Relax outdoors. I see you're in the chat. I didn't uh, get to see what you just wrote. If you put that back on the screen, I'll read it though. Oh, exactly. I confronted the officer before he had my son in cuffs. Yeah. Okay. So there's several lies by omission, and then there's some lies. Okay. Um, one, he doesn't say anything about his use of force, and I feel like this might be the angle that we can get some action on because, uh, I mean, I'm sure there's policies on reporting use of force, um, and he didn't. You know, he said that there was an abrasion due to his actions. What were his actions? You know, if his actions are justified, well, why didn't he just say what he did? You know, did he tackle him? The EMS uh, documented no injuries. WTF? Um, <laughs> there were injuries. Okay, why did they not document them? Is it because government's covering for government? 
you know, because he made sure to write that in his report that EMS documented no injuries, right? And uh, another thing I'm concerned about was on the nine one on the radio transmissions. We haven't played that, but we heard uh, the officer cancel EMS, and then uh, he called again and asked for EMS to be sent out again. So why did he cancel EMS in the first place? He said that Jason didn't say anything to him. So certainly Jason, right? And we know that uh, his dad was saying he did need an ambulance. And I think that's when one got called out, but they didn't do anything. They didn't even document his injuries. Luckily, his dad documented them because we know there's injuries. We know his shirt was ripped. I mean, that's his property. If the police rip your shirt, they don't even have the decency to document it. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So um, that's uh, the major issues that I'm having. But, I mean, that's just not even talking about the fact there was no crime. Yay, uh, Lady Justice Liberty Press shining the light of Liberty Bright. She was just smoking government, but, um, you know, we don't we don't post uh, about what we're doing right now. Uh, so that'll be on a later episode. Uh, the government will just have to wait for their spanking on that one. And that's how we do it. Yes, we've got Sam the Man uh, in Bakersfield, Lady Justice Liberty Press. Hello, um, Ariel. People, <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. Relax outdoors. I do not fault the officer for his initial actions. I fault him for his subsequent actions when I confronted the officer and he continued to detain him for no reason. Uh, yeah, um, I fault him for all of his actions and I fault uh, dispatch for their actions and their failure to listen to uh, your neighbor who um, made a uh, you know, an accurate, fairly accurate report. He did say he knew things that he didn't know, but, um, you know, he, um, he, he did what he did, but the trained professionals, um, didn't listen and translated his words into other words. And by the time the officer got there, he, uh, didn't have accurate information and he still made wrong decisions. Um, he uh, had no reasonable articulable suspicion to detain Jeremy as far as I'm concerned with the evidence I've seen so far. But if they can show me a code that looking in windows is a crime, um, then, you know, I'll, I'll make a new decision based on that. Yeah, yeah. But Lady Justice did all this work and went up. Yeah. So the officer didn't know what he had. Right, that means he didn't have any reasonable articulable suspicion, you know, and yet he uh, he chased him down anyway and tackled him. Lady Justice. There's no mention of that tackle found anywhere in any of the reports that I have gone through thus far. But yet we have the captain saying that he tackled him and the Sergeant Price also saying he tackled him. Right. Uh, and the officer admitted he tackled him. Um, well, why didn't he write it down? There's no use of force report at all. And <clears throat> that is a good question, especially if he can use force. Uh, why? Why is it not there? To minimize it, you know, throughout his career, to minimize what he's done. Absolutely. Yeah. That that's a very good. Very good. Yeah, I mean, it's very carefully worded, you know, and um, it's a little braggadocious. I don't like the way he said I I, uh, I detained the mail or something. It was like, right. you know, just like a hunter after its prey. Right, and, and uh, I didn't know what I had. Like, he's yeah. minimized again and making himself better than. Yeah. And they've definitely tried to blame the neighbor, too. I mean, um, you know, I'm not for calling the police uh, for any reason in this day and age because um, they always make it worse. And hopefully, you know, he'll he'll learn that. 
but um, I, he didn't take an oath, and I don't expect him to be a constitutional scholar or anything. But, uh, you know, he reported pretty true and correct information, and the dispatch changed it all around and didn't say anything about, like, he looked lost. or He just wanted them to come out and help Jason, which is what he said uh, more than once. He said, you know, I just think that somebody should come and help him. And um, instead, they came and tackled him. You know, and um, and start him mentally, right? And that's not just gonna go away. I'm, you know, it's not just gonna go away, right? 